If you're booked on P&O Cruises Arvia this winter to the Caribbean, then this episode is for you. I cover all eight ports of call and recommend what shore excursions to book or whether it's better to do your own thing. Welcome to episode one of my Caribbean cruise port series. So come and join me on my Caribbean adventures with lots and lots of tips along the way. First stop, Barbados. Pack my things up carefree. Adventures way in. I'm heading out, heading out to see the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah. So much to do in Barbados. I decided to do a five hour catamaran tour. It was full with uh, PO cruises, so I booked a similar tour with. Viator, who used the company El Tigre. It was a five hour cruise, including lunch, snorkeling uh, over three shipwrecks, and also hopefully swimming with the turtles, and then cruising on the catamaran up the west coast. It was amazing. So we arrived into Barbados on the Friday evening. So on the Saturday morning, uh, first thing, we got off Arvia. We walked over to the duty-free building where you've got green circles, which shows you the way to the taxi rank. Once out of the duty-free building, then there's plenty of signposts and we were heading to get a taxi then to where the tour was starting. There's plenty of taxi drivers uh, all ready to show you uh, which cab to get into, uh, how much they're charging. It's it's never a problem to take you where you want to go. So we got in a cab and a couple were in with us because they wanted to be dropped off at the boatyard. It's only five dollars, it's five minutes down the road, uh, so we went to the boatyard. Many, many people uh, rave about the boatyard and how incredible it is. It's only thirty-five dollars if you want a beach day. It's thirty-five dollars, you get a drink, sunbed, sun lounger, swim with the turtles included. Uh, and it's a phenomenal place to be for the day, as you can see. But please do get there early. I'd recommend about 9 a.m. because it does get really, really busy. So once we dropped the people off, then we headed up to the starting point or the meeting point for the catamaran cruise with El Tigre. Once there, we met everybody, met the crew. We had to sign a disclaimer, uh, do a few safety briefings, uh, which took about 30 minutes. And then we were on the catamaran and on our way to our first shipwreck. I was so excited. The catamaran holds about 20 people and included a free drinks throughout and also lunch. So here we are on our way to our first shipwreck. First though, another safety briefing, and then we all put our snorkels on. There's some stairs that lead from the ship into the sea. So, so exciting, not to have been snorkeling for so long. Uh, so let's see if I can see any turtles. Goodness me, that was absolutely fantastic. I loved every single minute of that. I might not have seen any uh, turtles, but the fish were incredible. I would so, so recommend this trip. Absolutely loved it. So now we leave the turtles and we leave the shipwrecks behind as we head up the west coast. And of course, sail past our beautiful home for the next two weeks. Service on board the catamaran was fantastic. You can have soft drinks or alcoholic drinks throughout, which is included in the price of your five hour journey. As you can see, there's the Hilton Hotel uh, where the Caribbean and the Atlantic Ocean meet. We met some incredible people on this trip. The crew, like I say, were amazing. So you can get off this tour after three hours and the crew will drop you off at one of the stunning beaches further up the west coast or you can stay on like we did for the five hour experience where you uh, stop here the catamaran anchors and then you have a wonderful wonderful lunch and the lunch is also included on the five hour trip uh, and it's chicken potatoes rice it was cooked really well really hot um it was lovely really was and to be fair it was definitely needed to soak up a bit of that rum uh, because the rum was pretty strong and very much free-flowing. 
But as they say up north, we are on us holidays after all. Uh, so a great time was had. We had time then also to snorkel after lunch as well before the catamaran set sail for her journey back to Bridgetown. I have to say, it's just been one amazing day in Barbados. So much to do. For my first time in Barbados, I'm so pleased that I chose the catamaran five hour sailing. We had such fun and it really did set the bar high for the rest of our Caribbean cruise. So when we get back uh, to the marine area, then El Tigre will take you back to the ship. So there's no messing around and then you are back on board the beautiful Arbia. And as the sun starts to set with a drink in our hand, we reminisce about what an amazing day we have had in Barbados. So don't forget to like and subscribe because next week I will be in Tortola. And what did I get up to? All I can say it was hair raising and many guests feared for their lives. But what could it be? Welcome to episode two of my Caribbean port series. So come and join me on my adventures where I'll share lots of tips and hints along the way. This week, I am in Tortola. Pack my things up carefree, adventures way in. I'm heading out, heading out to see the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Tortola. Now, we were on starboard side and this was the view we woke up to uh, this morning. I mean, does it really get any better than that? I don't think it does. So today we decided to do our own thing and we've been recommended Cane Garden Bay. So as soon as you reach the pier, then there are these little buses waiting for you. So it's $24 return and it's about 20 minutes each way. Now you do have to wait for these buses to fill up and then you can get on your way. So you can see the mountain in the background. This bus is going up it literally and then over the top and then down into Cane Garden Bay. Now Tortola is the largest of the British Virgin Islands of course featuring several white beaches including Cane Garden Bay where we're heading to today. It's a very safe island as well is Tortola and they take US dollars so please take some cash with you. <music> chugs up the hill very very slowly i've got to say it was a little hair raising i'm not gonna lie going up and over this mountain uh, by this little bus as you can see uh, there isn't a lot of room how it gets up the hill i have no idea but they but it does and they do it's all worth it though because the views that you get are absolutely stunning and this is what tortola is famous for the beautiful amazing panoramic views and the driver will stop as well at certain viewpoints for you to take some incredible photos so now over the mountain we head down into cane garden bay this is probably one of the most popular beaches on tortola and can get very very busy so please do get there early i'd probably recommend between 8 30 and 9 a.m to claim you some bed and a very good spot in the sand now whilst you're in cane garden bay you could also visit the calwood rum distillery At over 400 years old it sits in the middle of cane garden bay is one of the and is one of the world's oldest distilleries now where else can you get five shots of rum for just a dollar well i don't know about you but that sounds really good to me how amazing and credible does cane garden bay look we were so excited to visit this beach because it had been so highly recommended and we're so glad we did. We enjoyed every single minute of it and just look at that view. So the daily rate to have two sunbeds and an umbrella is just $10 per person, which I think is really good value. And this was our little spot on the beach when we arrived. 
Now there are lots of these little shacks up and down the beach for where you can go and get a drink if you want to or if not there's a menu by your sunbed uh, where you can order all kind of different cocktails and meals. Now we decided the first things first our breakfast two wonderful creamy pina coladas. Well we are on a holidays after all. to say I'm having a lovely time <laughs> it's beautiful so I hope you can see I'll just turn it round it's a gorgeous gorgeous stunning backdrop with beautiful beautiful white sandy beaches so if you do want to come uh, to have a lovely beach day then uh, it's about 15 20 minutes by taxi and it's Cane Garden Bay so um, definitely worth a visit and I did this uh, independently uh, not through any tour operator it's so easy so like I said earlier it's $24 return and you can leave the beach uh, on the hour at uh, every hour so one two three four o'clock in the afternoon there is a bus waiting to take you back to the ship so we decided to leave about one o'clock and this was a lovely gentleman waiting for us we were back on the bus and then again up and over the hill and back down into road town where Arvia was waiting for us but look at these incredible views that we got as we were heading back out of Cane Garden Bay. So back to the cruise port. Now at the cruise port, there is a few little shops, as, uh, gift shops as well that you can have a look if you want any little gifts to take home with you. Uh, and also if you are doing a beach day, then take some cash because the places on the beach and the taxi drivers don't take credit cards. So do take some US dollars. It's completely safe. We did this independently. We didn't do any tour. We just did our own thing and we thor thoroughly enjoyed it. So if you do like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe subscribe next week come and join us as we head to la romana and find out why everybody's singing and clapping to ymca and what was this guy up to we had a great time see you next week welcome to my third episode of my caribbean port series and this week i am in la romana so this video gives you ideas and tips on what to do when you're there Welcome to La Romana. So a city located on the southeast side of Dominican Republic and famous for its beautiful scenery and its stunning beaches. Here we are at the cruise port of La Romana, very purpose built. Here you can use, there are sunbeds by the beach, there's a massive swimming pool as well that you can use free of charge and there's bars and restaurants as well. So you literally just get off the ship and you walk through this purpose built area to the p and Cruises team who will direct you on where to go for your shore excursion. Now we decided to book the Choo Choo train which is £15 per person and it's a 45 minute return trip which takes you into the city of La Romana. We've done that this morning and then this afternoon it's a beach day. What we didn't realise was with the Choo Choo train was the entertainment that came with it. So watch this space because the entertainment is probably the best part of the trip. Um, so here we are, we're leaving Arvia, we're leaving the cruise port now. And as we head on over to the city of La Romana, the tour guide explains the history of the city to us, uh, which is quite educational. It really is a whistle-stop tour of the centre of the city. And as you can see, people are really, really friendly. Everyone's saying hi to us. Uh, then the entertainment starts. We had this gentleman who came with us. He was part of the choo-choo train experience and boy could he dance, but you'll see more of him later on. You'll also see when you book this trip is a police escort, which is with you from the minute you leave the cruise port to the end of the trip. So now we are back on our way to the cruise port and back to Arvia, ready for the entertainment to begin. Don't stop me, I'm having a good time, having 
not sure the £15 per person was worth the uh, 45 minute experience but the entertainment definitely was he was fantastic everybody was singing clapping laughing uh, so for that reason it was a thumbs up in the afternoon we headed to Bayahiba Beach it's 15 to 20 minutes by taxi which was $15 per person return Bayahiba is one of the best beach options nearest to the cruise port uh, as you can see with beautiful white sand crystal clear blue waters uh, but was really busy because we got there in the afternoon also recommended is Siona Island it's absolute paradise with an open bar food and op optional massages for just $20 you head out by catamaran back by speedboat uh, an amazing place but you must book with PO cruises due to the time restraints on the trip but very very much recommended so back to the ship back on board Avia but not before doing a little bit of duty free shopping first so come and join me next week as I visit the beautiful island of St Martin I travel around the island and let's just say I get a little bit more than what I bargained for see you next week Welcome to episode 4 of my Caribbean port series. Now this week finds me in St Martin where I visit one of the island's most stunning beaches and it isn't St Maho. Welcome to St Martin, otherwise known as Friendly Island and is now one of only a few ports able to accommodate the world's largest cruise ships. I absolutely love St Martin, it's one of my favourite islands, there is so much to do on this island. Uh, so we decided to do our own thing, do something independently and head over to one of the most stunning beaches on the northeast coast of St Martin called Orient Beach or Orient Bay. Now, here I am in Orient Bay in St Martin. Now we decided to, when we get off the ship we're going to do an independent day today. So we literally went to get a cab five minutes walk from the ship and we searched beautiful beaches in St Martin uh, and Orient Bay was one of the top beaches here. So uh, 20 minutes later, uh, 25 uh, dollars return per person and here we are it's really really beautiful there is a bit of seaweed on the beach as you can see uh, but that is because of the time of year there's a beautiful wind there which because of the heat uh, it's kind of yeah I'm really grateful for it if I'm honest with you this is a great beach bar serve uh, all the cocktails drinks you can imagine and reasonable value as well with a great menu for lunch but this is as you can see it's absolutely beautiful This beach bar was fantastic. The service, it uh, was second to none. It was so clean as well. They had a huge menu, a specials board, and a huge drink and cocktails menu uh, that I thought was really reasonably priced. And if you want, they'll bring your drinks or your food to where you sat. Fabulous. Now, if you are looking for an all over town, then look no further because 10 minutes walk further along, it brings you here. Welcome to Au Natural. So with swimming costume firmly in place, 
we headed back to the cruise port because we had some serious shopping to do. St Martin isn't just famous for its beaches, it has an amazing array of jewellery shops. Now one lady told me that she bought a bracelet in St Martin, paid £2,700 for it and when she got back to the UK it was actually valued at 10500 I mean, the bargains on diamonds you can have in St Martin is ridiculous. Hands up anybody else who likes to get the photograph outside the name of the cruise port, because I know I do. I look for this sign at every single cruise port, do you? So back to business and it's time to do a little bit of shopping. There's quite a few shops at the cruise port, as you can see, where you can buy your knickknacks. Now these, I have to say, are a must when you're in the Caribbean, but I think these are quite expensive, the $10 for two. Now you can get them in home bargains for a few pounds. Now I did make one small purchase. Now my daughter has them and my friends have them, but I didn't have any, but I do now. Of course, what am I talking about? It's Crocs. Uh, 45 to 50 pounds valued in the UK and I got this little pair for 28 pounds. Absolute bargain. There is so much to do on St Martin, but some other recommendations of beaches is Friars Bay Beach is absolutely beautiful. And that's on the west coast of St Martin. Or if you if you want to go to St Maho Beach, which is really popular, where you can see the planes come in, make sure you get a flight schedule before you go. And the cheapest route is a water taxi that you can get just outside the cruise port. And it's $7 per person return. So come and join me next week because I will be in Antigua where I swim with the pigs. Yes, yeah, swim with the pigs in Seaforth Beach. Can't wait to share it with you. It was absolute an incredible day and totally unexpected. So don't forget to like, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye. Welcome to episode five of my Caribbean port series. This week finds me in a once in a lifetime trip swimming with the pigs in Antigua. Pack my things up carefree, adventures waiting. I'm heading out, heading out to see the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Antigua. At just 14 miles longer than 13 miles wide, it is one of the largest of the Leeward Islands. So today we are on the west coast and heading south towards Seaforth Beach to meet the pigs in paradise. I absolutely cannot wait to meet them. Now it's a 20 minute speedboat ride from the cruise port to Seaforth Beach and the cost is $40 per person return. Now, I booked this uh, trip directly with Pigs in Paradise. I first went on to the website and it showed that the day we were in Antigua was actually sold out. So there was a telephone number on there, so I called them and they had availability, which was great. Uh, so you could either pay by PayPal or she said, if not, just turn up and you pay on arrival. And it was $100 per person and transfers to Seaforth Beach return were not included in that. What was really unexpected was that our lovely speedboat captain took us to all the beautiful stunning beaches on the way. So we saw Deep Bay Beach, we saw Galley Beach and we saw Eden Beach. And now finally, here we are and welcome to Seaforth Beach and Pigs in Paradise. Now, not only do you get to have such a unique experience, but the scenery is absolutely breathtaking. We're so feeding with the baby bottles, and I'll show you how to do that. And we'll also be feeding off our hand with, um, with like pellets, okay? Um, so uh, we'll put the pellets in your hand, and uh, please do not feed them without supervision. We'll, we'll show you exactly how to do it. Okay. It's such a special place, Paradise Pigs, because you get an exclusive pig beach experience and you get to cuddle the pigs, pet them, hold them, swim with them, race with them uh, on a beautiful, beautiful beach. Now you will see there is a hierarchy between the pigs and you will see Miss Piggy, who as the leader of the pack, she doesn't have to compete for her food. <laughs> Whereas you find the little piggies uh, in the video as it goes on compete against each other for more and more food. 
this. Imagine she doesn't have to compete for the food. So if you're feeding one of these piggies, a few other piggies may run in to try and get it because they are competing. All right. So I'm going to move out the way. I go down to the ground. My fingertips are on the ground. My fingertips must be on the ground. Okay. We were constantly taught how to act with the pigs and how to feed them. So we're all given a baby bottle, as you can see, and, had, <laughs> and feed the pigs some milk. And they were all competing for that bottle, believe me. And I finally get to hold a little piggy. Now meet Pina Colada, my favorite piggy out of them all, having his lunch. He was absolutely gorgeous, he was. And if that wasn't enough, you get to run with the pigs. Now the pigs absolutely love human interaction. And here they are racing each other before having a little swim to cool off. They are so cute. And before you know it, the two and a half hours is sadly over. Now, Pigs in Paradise charge $100 per adult. Children aged 6 to 15 years of age are $50, not to 5 years are free. They offer two visits a day, which is 9.30am and 12.30 noon. Refreshments and light snacks are also included at the end of your experience. So our speedboat driver waited for us, as you can see there, and then took us to Deep Bay Beach and these gorgeous, gorgeous over the water bungalows, a thousand pound a night. But you know what? They may offer world-class reservations, free dining and exceptional amenities, but they don't have Epicurean, the beach house and 710 club. Speak of the devil and there she is. Do you know what? It was absolute and amazing, amazing experience. I would recommend it so much. So back to the pier and we have more entertainment to greet us. <laughs> Antigua, you have been amazing. Next week you will find me in St Lucia riding a pillion with a very nice tour guide in Rodney Bay. What could possibly go wrong? Welcome to episode 6 of my Caribbean port series and this week finds me in St Lucia using a very unusual form of transport to tour the island. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Pack my things up carefree, adventures waiting, I'm heading out, heading out to see the rest of the world, yeah, yeah. Welcome to St Lucia. 617 square kilometres, St Lucia is home to the two mountainous range, the Pitons, on the west coast, with volcanic beaches, reef diving sites, rainforests and waterfall trails, you can really see why this island is a popular choice for cruise ships. So today we decided to leave the choo-choo trains and the beaches alone to do something more adventurous. So we got in a bus and we're headed up the west coast to Rodney Bay on these. To be fair, I think we need our head tested if I'm honest with you. Now we booked this through PR Cruises called the Wheelie Scooter Tour in St Lucia, £100 per person and we had to have a little test to see how good we were at riding the scooters when we arrived. Well, I'm not going to lie, I failed miserably, but to be fair it was a win-win because I ended up on the back. Uh, a pillion on the back of the tour guide called Brad. So with Brad in full control that gave me the chance to see this stunning area of Rodney Bay from mansions to beautiful beautiful views and to very pretty houses. It was stunning but not before we arrived at the Darren Sammy Cricket Ground. Now if you are a big cricket supporter like my family are then it was a really special place to come. Opened in 2002 with a seating capacity of 15,000, then this is the home to the West Indies cricket team on many occasions. Next stop is Grosalia, as they say, and this is a real party town. Now they call it Fish Friday nights every Friday. They open the streets from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. for one massive street party. So a great place to come and here is Rodney Bay. Rodney Bay is really, really beautiful as you can see. It's home to lots of bars, restaurants, shops, lovely hotels. It's relaxed, but then it's one of the liveliest destinations on the island. But also you can do kite surfing, you can do snorkeling, game fishing. 
it really really is very pretty you've also got stunning views of Pigeon Island as well now I really really recommend this trip if you want to get out of your comfort zone and have some fun along the way then this is a trip for you but don't worry if you're not able to ride the scooter like me uh, there are other choices for you you can either go on the back of your husband if he's uh, capable of riding the scooter or you can go on the back of a tour guide as well so thoroughly enjoyed it and highly recommended I just want to say thank you to Brad because we had an absolute ball for the whole duration with my arms around his waist <laughs> We did nothing but laugh for the whole time. Uh, so a great thank you to him and I Ride Tours and Rentals. So as we say goodbye to St Lucia, what an amazing day. Join me next week when I am in Martinique. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. Until next time. Welcome to the penultimate episode of my Caribbean port series. And today I am in Martinique and found a very unique way of shuttling to the end of the pier. Pack my things up carefree Adventures waiting I'm heading out, heading out To see the rest of the world Yeah, yeah Here we are in Martinique today. Now, we decided that we were going to do our own thing. So when we disembarked Arvia, uh, then it, we realised, I think it was about a 10 to 15 minute walk to the end of the pier. But unbeknown to us was this lady in a little cab outside the ship. So we asked her what she was there for really and she said she's there to take passengers free of charge to the end of the pier and bring them back again. So it was a great little unique way of experiencing uh, a little shuttle transfer to the end of the pier which gave me some great views of Aria behind us. But I thought it was a great addition. Now, if you have got mobility issues, then this is a great way of getting to the end of the pier. Uh, really enjoyed it. Don't you just love that at every port you're greeted by Caribbean music in a steel band? We decided to do our own thing in Martinique, so we wanted to go to the jetty and get a boat to the other side of the island. But as you can see, the queue was so long, we would not have got back to the ship on time. So we decided to have a little look around. But I would recommend if it's busy, then do get a coach tour with either your cruise line or Caribbean Island tours. Now, Caribbean Island Tours are a Facebook group and Awina, who runs it, is amazing. They do so many trips, some really, really good value and the tour companies uh, are fantastic. I've used this company many, many times before, so highly recommended. Now, if you don't want to do a trip, then there's lots of little shops at the end of the pier selling lots of knickknacks that you can buy to take home. Now, full details of all the trips and the prices are in the comments box on this video. So come and join me next week where I will be on this. A train travelling through the sugar canes of St Kitts with incredible views in the last of the series. I look forward to seeing you then. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Welcome to the last episode in my Ultimate Caribbean Port series. Have I saved the best till last? I think so. Welcome to St Kitts. Pack my things up carefree Adventures waiting I'm heading out, heading out to see the rest of the world Yeah, yeah Wow, what a view to wake up to every single morning. Welcome to St Kitts. We have such a busy day planned today in St Kitts, from riding the sugarcane train, then over to Shipwreck Barns, Shipwreck Beach. But first things first, let's have a look around the cruise port. Now I think St Kitts Cruise Port is probably my favourite out of all the ports we visited. There's so many shops, so many bars, restaurants. The atmosphere is really good. It's spotlessly clean. Everyone's really friendly. Plus, they've got an amazing coffee shop selling these donuts. Now, they were that good, I just had to have two of them. 
Now there were four ships in this morning and it was getting really busy. We'd booked the sugar train tour which we had to meet at 8.30am from the smoke and booze store located to the left of the St Kitts logo. The tour guide was carrying a green TripAdvisor flag and here we are on our way. But I booked the sugar train through Facebook group Caribbean Island Tours and it was $100 per person. Uh, it was two hours on the train and then also included was a little bit of an island tour. So the transport was included from the minute we left the ship and brought us back to the ship. As we left the cruise port, we headed up to this stunning, stunning area, infamous in St Kitts is Timothy Hill. Now, as you can see, it's absolutely stunning. This is where the Atlantic Ocean meets the Caribbean Sea. It's one of the most stunning uh, viewpoints in St Kitts and it's highly, highly recommended. So we leave Timothy Hill and make our way seeing some more of the island as we go further north to where the scenic uh, railway train departs from passing some lovely beaches on the way. On our right, you'll find the St. George's <coughs> Anglican Church. And where this church stands today is where the first Anglican Church was built on our island. So this road we're on is called, anybody? Church Street. Street. Oh, you see the sign? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had such a great guy. He was an amazing driver and a great tour guide. Good sense of humour. Uh, but if you didn't know, St Kitts is located in the Eastern Caribbean, 1,200 miles from Miami and four hours behind UK time. It's 69 square miles with a population of 40,000. Uh, Eastern Caribbean dollars and US dollars are accepted. Welcome to St Kitts Scenic Railway. As you can see, it's uh, double decker. Now, it was really, really hot this day and somebody had said to us, go underneath, go on the bottom deck because there's air conditioning, it's too hot at the top. I'm so glad we did, that was a really good tip. Now, all your drinks are included as well, rum punches, pina coladas and soft drinks are aplenty. So as the lovely waitress comes to take our order of rum punches, then we sit back and enjoy the scenery. Now, you may not know that this train is over a hundred years old and it was used to transport the sugarcane from the sugarcane plantations to the sugar factory in Basseterre. One thing I wasn't expecting though, was this. <laughs> So with the entertainment finished, we went to the back of the train to stand on this viewpoint to take a closer look at the incredible, incredible scenery. The train winds along the island's coastline, past cane fields and abandoned plantations, really providing you with some incredible, incredible views. Now, it may be a little bumpy at times, but this really is a magical way to see the island and add that with some amazing insight into the history, together with rum punches galore. It really is a fabulous, fabulous trip. After the train ride, the guide takes you then back to the ship, but we decided to ask for a detour to one very special bar. Welcome to Shipwreck Bar on Shipwreck Beach. Only 20 minutes from the cruise port, Shipwreck Bar on Shipwreck Beach is one of the best Caribbean beach bars on the island of St Kitts. The sea here is so warm and inviting. The service is fantastic as is the onward supply of curry beers. The food is great as very much recommend uh, the nachos. I absolutely loved it here. And if you add the addition of the odd monkey or two, Shipwreck Bar really is highly recommended. I would always check in your cruise port how many ships are in port. Now there were four in port, so it was really busy. But if you don't have anything pre-booked, there are lots of agents and tour companies touting for business when you get off the ship. So as the sun starts to set on the stunning island of St Kitts, 
we head back to the ship to enjoy evening celebrations on board Arvia. What an incredible day we had. If you like this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.